Hi guys, this is Stacy. I am back again today with another Cricut Explore video. For today's video, we're actually making a wood project. We're making holiday blocks. I've seen these all over Pinterest and all they are are pieces of wood you're gonna cut down and then you're gonna stack them to spell out like a certain phrase or lettering that you'd like. Um, some say Merry Christmas, some say Jingle Bells, Happy Halloween, Live, Laugh, Love, all kinds of things. I'm gonna choose Merry Christmas. So I went to my shed and I found uh, two pieces of wood. This is actually a two by four cut in half long ways. Okay, so it was a two by four to start with and we just cut it down the center long ways. So these measure uh, two inches wide by about one and a half inches thick. So uh, my, the front of my blocks are all gonna be two inches wide. Now I can share with you the setup or what I'm thinking about for my design. All right, so I'm thinking about having a piece of wood like that, a tall piece. Let me zoom you guys in. Okay, scooch this out. So I wanna have a tall piece here, one laying down this way, another one over here like that. So it looks like a bed almost. And then a small piece right here, a small piece right there, and then a little bit taller one there. Okay. And I'm gonna cut out the lettering. Um, so it's gonna spell it Merry Christmas. So I'm gonna have a large M go here, a large Y go there, and then E, R, and R is going to go there. And then the word Christmas is going to go there, okay? So it's gonna look like this, pretty much. I cut out just, you know, this cheap cardstock. Um, so I'm gonna have one go this way. Long, I'm gonna sneeze, hang on. <coughs> okay, just one sneeze, usually I do five. Okay, so one will go this way, one's going to go that way, and one's going to go this way. Okay, now like I said, since my wood is two inches wide, I'm making them be six inches tall. I think six inches is good as far as scale. You know, since my wood is so narrow, I don't want to go to be like 10 inches. It'll look kind of funny. So two by six, I'm going to have three of those. So two inches by six, two by six, two by six. Then I have these other pieces here, two by two. They're going to go on each end like that. Then I have a piece here that is two by three. That's going to go right there. Okay. That's kind of how it's going to look when we're done. So we're going to have a letter M, E, R, R, Y, and then the word Christmas down here. Okay. Um, I think that'll work. All right, so now what we need to make this, of course, your wood. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and measure this. This is my longer piece here. Uh, but I might take you guys out back with me and cut this out. Oh, I'm gonna just use a jigsaw and we're gonna hope I, you know, come back with all my fingers. All right, so two inches wide is with my wood. I'm gonna go to be six inches. Right there, I'm gonna mark that to be six. So I know this is a six inch piece. And I'm gonna go back to six inches here and mark it down here. So I have six and six. You know, this may not be exact because I'm gonna have the width of the blade going through it. So I might need to measure as I go kind of thing, but this is kind of giving you an idea. So I have six and six and another six inch piece right here, roughly, okay? That's also gonna be six. So I got my three, my two sides on my bottom. This piece down here is two and a half, so I'll just probably toss that one. All right, so on this piece of wood, I need my two inch by two inch, my two by two, and my two by three, okay? All right, so we have all that. We're gonna go back out and cut that. Now, what we need to, when we're done cutting it, we're gonna need sandpaper to sand it down. And I went to the Family Dollar Store, and I bought all this stuff, and it was under $5, 508. So this sandpaper was um, 175, there's eight sheets, there's 24. You know, eight fine, eight medium, eight coarse, and we'll see how, we, how it goes. I went and got foam brushes, an eight piece set. These were also a dollar. Then I got two, these were the sandpaper was 175, and these were a dollar. I picked up two um, school glues. These are a dollar a piece, because we're gonna make our own Mod Podge for this. Um, you know, not, you can cover them with paper if you'd like, um, all kinds of things. You can put a vinyl on them. I'm actually gonna just paint them red and green and gold, and we're gonna cut the lettering out using the Cricut Explore and white cardstock, and then Mod Podge them on, so it'll kind of be like a sealer as well. Um, I think it'll look okay. Now, the colors I'm using, okay, let me explain how my head works here. So we have our little blocks. This is a red block, a red block, so I want them to be the anchor colors here. Now I have a piece here, my little piece there, here and here. 
So, I don't want them all to be red or green, but I want them to be red and green. I also don't want the reds touching or the greens touching. Okay, so I'm gonna have a red one go here, a green one, a red one, a green one, and a red one. So if I do red or green down here, it's gonna touch this part, which is red, or these part that's green. So I'm actually painting this gold. Okay, and this is the paint I'm using. I have this, and this we got all this from Walmart, I believe. This is Folk Art Royal Gold, number 2480. Apple Barrel Real Green, 20651. And then we have my phone ringing. Um, Apple Barrel Flag Red, 21469. Hey! Okay, first me sneezing, then the phone ringing. Alright, so that was my husband. He's probably on his way home, so I'm going to have him cut the wood. This way I can keep on my fingers. Alright, so um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. We're already at five minutes. So I'm going to have him cut my wood down. Remember, my sizes are two inches by six. I need three of those. Two that are two by two. One that is a two by three. Alright, when that's all cut, I'll come back. Uh, we'll prep the wood as far as sanding, and we're going to paint it. We're going to paint that on there, and we're also going to sand it off to make it look more not so new. Okay, and I'm going to go all the way around my my wood. Um, you know, paint the entire thing. All right, like, like I said, you can cover that with paper if you want to. Um, you know, you can use vinyl. I think though, if I paint it, you know, vinyl may be an issue as far as applying it. So I just think you know, regular white Walmart cardstock is good. And then you know, since we're going to do red and green and gold for our colors. I think white will be pretty. You can tie like a little white ribbon around the E or the R in the center to kind of bring it all together. And then I'll kind of coordinate with your white cardstock. I think white ribbon is like a dime a dozen. All right, so I'm gonna go cut these all out and then um, we'll come back, we'll stay enough prep and then we'll go to the Cricut Explore machine, cut our letters out and then we'll um, continue on. Hey guys, I am back. I have all the wood cut. My husband went out back and cut it for me. We have the three two by sixes, our two two by twos and our one two by three. When he was done cutting them, I seamed them down, you know, on the raw edges where he cut them on the top and the bottom, a little bit on the sides to make them a little bit smoother. Then when I was done doing that, I took a wipey and just wiped over the wood to get rid of any extra um, sawdust on them. And I went and painted my three red. They're all sitting here. And I only painted the um, upper half, a little bit of run there. This way I, was, I had an area to grab them. Okay, so now what I'm going to carry on and do these two here, which are green. So I'm going to bring in a piece of um, paper. And then I have a container right here, a cookie container. I'm going to put a little bit of green in this section here. And then grab another brush. And we're going to paint these green. Now, if you're using a wipey like I did, Make sure you get rid of any wipey hairs that may be on there, okay? And my wood is not perfect as far as the cutting, and that's okay, you know, I'm not fine with that. I think it adds a little bit of character to it. All right, so we're gonna do all the sides here, and again, I'm gonna leave myself a little bit of a handle so we can grab it. And we're putting on such a, a thin coat, it should take only a few minutes to dry. Just want to go around, make sure I don't have any runs on the wood. And I'm doing all the sides, so all six sides I'm doing. You know, so later on I can come back and add another phrase to the reverse side to make it a reversal block as well. Alright, so there's one green one. Let's do this one as well. And on the sides where the raw wood is exposed or where it was cut at, you know, you may need to kind of dab it like that. Okay. Let's go ahead and do this side over here. And I have a glove on. Even though it's acrylic paint, it should come right off, but. Okay, just when you're done one side, just go around and make sure you check all your corners. And then this one, we're just gonna dab it on this end over here. That was one of the raw ends. Okay. And depending on how it looks when it's dried, you know, we may need a second coat, but I think we're going to be okay. All right, that one's done. We have our other one here. I'm going to go ahead and paint that one in the gold. And oh, I have another small brush here. Okay, perfect. And I just, I saved these little containers. I used to have them in my desk for like a drawer organizer, and they work really good. Oh, that's a pretty gold. Nice and shiny. Um, 
but I took it out because I needed a, I needed a container for this. All right, so that is really pretty. It's like a metallic. It does that look nice? Okay. Yeah, I think I think we're probably going to need a second coat on some of these. But, you know, I recommend putting it on thin first, and then if you need to go back for another coat, it's easier that way. Just make sure they're dried in between each one. That's a really pretty color. And then this side. So I figured while all this is drying, We'll go to the Explore and we'll start doing our lettering for this, okay? All right, and again, just make sure you go back over it. You know, give it like one good last rub down to make sure there's no um, strings or runs anywhere, okay? All right, I think it looks pretty good. I'm gonna leave my brushes sit inside here so I have my red and my green, or my gold and my green, and I have my red in a little tuna can right there, okay? So I'm going to set them down like that, carefully, take my glove off. All right, let's go to the Explore and start working on the letters. Okay, while our paint is drying, let's go ahead and go to the Cricut Design Space webpage. And we're going to log in the way we always do. Click on that green box in the upper left-hand corner. Enter in your email and your password. And then when you see your name in that green box, that confirms you're logged in. We want to go right here where it says create new project. Click on that. And now we're going to go to the gray toolbar left hand side. Click on insert images. It's going to bring up the image library. I'm under all images. In the search box, I'm going to type in the word square. Hit enter. And I'm going to use the first square that pops up right there. Click on that. We're going to insert the image. There's our square there. Now I'm going to resize the square to match my blocks. Have my square selected. Upper right hand corner, click on edit. I'll bring up your edit panel window. I need to unlock the lock that's holding width and height together. So click on that and you'll see that open. I'm going to change the width from 2.19 to be 2 inches. Hit enter. Change my height to 6. And you would just change this for whatever size blocks you guys are using. Alright, so I have one 2 by 6 block. I'm going to go have that selected. Top toolbar, click on copy, then paste. Now I have two, and then one more, I'll have my three. I'm going to separate these guys out and rotate one of them. So there's that one there. This one, I'm going to click on Edit. In the center there where it says Rotate, click on the zero and then change that to be 90 degrees. And you'll see that rotate for us. And then we have that one here. Now I need the blocks to the center. So I have any block selected. Up top, click on Copy, then Paste. And then grab that box, click on edit, unlock the lock, and then change that height to be a two. So now we have a two by two block. I need two of those. So I'm gonna go up top again, hit on copy, and then paste. All right, so now we have our two by two blocks. I need one that is two by three. So again, copy and paste. I'm gonna change this box to be three inches. Unlock the lock change the height to be three, then hit enter. All right, so now we have all the blocks. Now I wanna change the colors where they match the blocks that I painted. So I'm gonna click on this guy right here and you'll find that you'll find where it is on the layer panel to be shadowed for you. Click on, click on the square color and then change that to whatever color your block's gonna be. In this case, mine's gonna be red. So I'm gonna change that to very berry. This one here is also very berry. Click on that one. And then the center one, right there, very, very. And then my two smaller ones, the two by twos, they're going to be a green color. I'll change both of those to sour apple. And you don't need to do this part. I just like seeing how things are going to look in color. All right, the bottom one down here is actually going to be gold. Let's see what we have here. We have candy corn. I'm going to kind of finagle in it this color picker. All right, that's close enough to be gold. All right, so there's what our block colors are gonna look like. Now you wanna grab our text. The left-hand side toolbar, click on Add Text. It's gonna bring up your text box window. And I'm gonna type out the word Christmas first. 
All right, I'm going to change the font. So under all fonts, I'm going to go down to where it says Cricut fonts. So now I'm using fonts only in the Design Space program. I'm going to change that from Cricut Alphabet to something different. And you want something that's kind of quirky. Uh, we have botanicals. Let me move this one out of the way. Yeah, I'm not liking that one. I mean, you can pick any font you like. Um, we have Cherry Limeade. Let's see what that one looks like. Well, that's kind of quirky. I kind of like that one. All right, let's look around. Something else. I'm not using Don Juan. Wow, those Hannah Montana ones are $6.95 a piece. That's crazy. All right, so we have, um, I just passed it, Kate's ABCs. No, I don't like that one either. We might be going back to Cherry Limeade. All right, let's try Noah's ABCs. Yeah, no. All right, I'm going to go down. Oh, Nursery Rhymes. That's a pretty one. I think I'm going to go with that one. What do you all think? I do like it. I'm going to change this to be white. So on your layer panel, change that to be white. Just so I can see it better. I do like that one, guys. I'm going to make it fit. So I'm going to make it a little bit taller here. I do like that one. All right, let's go back to add text. And then our text box is going to appear. I'm going to type in the capital letter M. And then we're going to resize this to fit this whole piece right here. So we may, we, we, we may change our font if this doesn't look good. So I'm going to bring this all the way down like that. Bring it up a little bit. And down. And I don't want to go the full distance of my block. I want to leave a little bit of edge. And right, I do kind of like that one. All right, now let's go back, um, add or add text box. Now we're going to do the letter E in lowercase. I want to bring that down over here and resize that to fit in this box. All right, let's go back. I'm actually just going to um, click on that, click on copy, then paste. All right, I'm going to change this to an R, so just double click on that, bring up your text box again, delete the E, then grab the R or put an R in. All right, and we're going to resize. Actually, it fits there, so I'm going to click on that again, hit copy and paste. So now I have two R's, I can resize this one for the center. Like that. All right. So I think I like everything. Oh, forgot the Y. Hang on. I'm going to click on the M, hit copy and then paste. And then bring that over, double click on it, change the M to a Y. And make that fit inside your box. I do like that. What do you all think? All right, let me go in there and change the colors to be white. I'll just click on each letter in my layer panel and change the color to be white. Alrighty, I think I like them. All right, so now all I need now are the letters. I don't need the, um, the square. So I can just take the squares off, hit delete. All I want is the letters. Delete that one. Oop, undo that one. Delete that square. And that square. Alright, let's go and hit go. And it's going to be all bonk on the mat. That's fine. Christmas will be in one word. But the letters are all going to be all kinds of wonky. And that's fine. I do have my Cricut plugged in and turned on. Alright, so we're looking like that. I can bring the E down here. You know what? I'm actually going to rearrange these. I'm using an 8x10 piece of cardstock. I'm using a Walmart brand, Georgia Pacific. So bring that up like that. 
bring that one up. So just rearrange these to where they're going to fit on your cardstock, okay? All right, that is right there is good. That's good to go. I'm not going to take you guys to the Cricut to cut them out. All we're going to do is cut these out in white. I'll meet you at the table and we'll put these on our blocks. Alrighty guys, I am back. I want to share with you an update. Uh, the Cricut has finished cutting up the letters for us. While it was doing that, I came back to my blocks and I repainted um, the areas where I left unpainted. Remember I used that for a handle? I went painted that area up so all of my blocks are done all the way around, top and bottom. I then looked at each block by itself to see if any area needed a second coating. Like right here, I had pen for my um, markings for my measurements. I had to go back and redo that area or apply a second coat of paint there because I was able to see my pen. So my hint for you guys is to use pencil, not pen, so you can erase that. But you can see there as well. And if I can't get all the red off, I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, so I went and did that for each block, make sure they all look pretty good. Uh, the green blocks as well, so they're all done. Now what we're going to do now is let the blocks dry overnight. Um, they, you know, they feel dry to the touch, but they're still a little bit cool. So they may not be completely dried. So I'd rather have them be all the way dry overnight. We'll come back tomorrow morning, give them a second coat of paint. And then when that's dry, we'll take our sandpaper and kind of rough up the edges a little bit. And by sanding, all we're going to do is sand down the corners a little bit, maybe a little bit on the sides to make it look uh, more vintage. If you don't like that look, you can most certainly, you know, paint it and leave it the way it is. But that's the kind of look I'm going for there. So we're doing that. Now with your paint, if you were using a foam brush like I am using here, take your paint out of your container and put that back in your jar. And then take your paintbrush and you can put that in like a little Ziploc baggie and just, you know, kind of close it up and put it away. And then that'll stay fresh or wet for you until the morning. And then when you're done tomorrow with the painting, you can just toss the brush out. So we're going to let this go and come back tomorrow morning and give it a second coat. So I'll see you guys in the morning. Hey guys, we're back. I went and second coated all of our blocks so they're all nice and finished and they, they all look pretty good. There's a few blocks like this red one that still shows where I used the pen. I'm not going to worry about it. Most likely we can make the letter cover that up. I also went and took all of my letters off the Cricut mat so they're all over here. I want to do first is make our Mod Podge. So I just kept this old Mod Podge container and the way I make mine, I do two glue you know, two liquid glues to one water. So take the top off this one and pour that in there. I'm going to kind of let that sit on there and we'll do the next one. This so one's just about done, this one here. Let that one sit on there. Whoop. Okay. Now I just take a little bit of water, or I fill one of the glue with water. Okay. I put the lid on it and give it a little bit of a shake. Just so it picks up any glue on the side of the container. Okay, then I take it and pour it in this one. And again, I'm doing this just so I can grab any extra glue on the container of the jar. All right, I'm gonna pour this one in your container here. And now I give this one a really good shake. And you wanna make sure this one's mixed pretty well. You can kind of hear how it's getting thicker because the glue is now mixing with the water. I'm going to grab a piece of paper here. All right, take the lid back off. Now i got sticky fingers. Let me grab a wipe it quickly. All right, what I want to do first, before we actually use our Mod Podge, you want to go back and sand things down, remember? I'm going to rough that up a little bit on the edges. So just take, and I'm using the 80 grit paper. I'm 
you know, just do it a little bit on the sides. I'm actually doing the front and the back. Let me grab a block. This is an extra block I had. A little bit easier putting it around a block. Like I said, just so it doesn't look so new. Okay, I think that one's good. Let's do our red one now. Okay. All right, now once again, we're going to take that paper out of the way. Grab a wipey and just wipe everything down. There's no extra sawdust anywhere on it. here so I'm not all stuck with sand or sand sawdust. All right. So we have, if we look at it, how we're going to set it up, this is our bottom. Our sides are right here. These ones are going to go there and then this one is going to go like that. Okay. So I'm going to take this container. This is just an old peanut butter lid. Pour my Mod Podge now in that so I have a bigger container to work with. All right, let's grab our M. So we're gonna scoot this over. I'm gonna do it this way. Take a little bit of the glue, the Mod Podge, and just put it on the front, just a thin coating. All right, then take your cardstock letter. And you only have like a few seconds here to work. You want to make sure you get everything on there nice and straight. Okay, and then when you like that, go back in with your Mod Podge again and just kind of seal that up. Okay, that one's good. But like I said, that aside, we did the same thing for our Y. Dry. On the top, so it should only take a few moments to dry. And you'll, you know, you can tell when it's dry because it'll be cleared. When that's when it's dried, we're gonna come back, give it a second coat, and then go all the way around our block. Okay. All right. So I will see you guys in a few minutes. Hi guys, I am back. I went and gave each block a second coating of Mod Podge where the lettering was. I leave myself a handle down here. I went around each block as well with more Mod Podge. So this is our second coat. When this is dried, I'll come back with a third and final coat of Mod Podge, making sure I do my bottom down here, the base of our block, and the area down there, and probably do my letters again. This way I know they're sealed three times with the Mod Podge on it, and then we're done. I will come back with a final video and set the blocks up the way they're supposed to be, and we'll take a look at it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the process of the video. They're really easy to make. Uh, the only difficult part, I think, would be getting the wood cut. Uh, but when you buy the wood at your store, you know they'll cut it for you for free. I think this is a great project to get the little ones involved in. You know, we didn't use anything toxic here. We used regular acrylic paint. We used school glue for our Mod Podge. They can most certainly come in there and paint them, sand them, add the letters. You know, they can pick out what they want the blocks to say, maybe for their room. They can do their names. All different things you can do with the wood. Um, you don't need to do it just for holidays. You can, they make great gifts all year round. You know, you can make them match the person's decor you're giving it to. Really fun. So like I said, we'll come back with a final video. Um, send the blocks up and we'll go from there. So I hope like, like I said, you guys enjoyed the process and I will see you when these are all done with our third coat of Mod Podge. Alrighty, we are back. Our blocks are almost dried. We have our three coats of Mod Podge on there. They're a little tacky to the touch. I put them on my deck to dry thinking they would dry quicker out there, but it's so hot in Florida today, they're not drying at all. 
Um, at least I can share with you here what it's going to look like when we're all done. Okay, let's go ahead and put these in our order. And they're adorable. I love it. And that font is really cute. And the font was again the um, nursery rhymes, I believe. All right, now to jazz it up, I'm going to put a little bit of piece of ribbon around my R block. I just have this, I don't know, 5 8 inch white ribbon that I got from an extra paper pumpkin kit from Stampin' Up! It was just left over from that kit. I'm going to tie this up, figure out how much ribbon I need, then we'll cut it off. Okay, so I'm going to put that through, and then hopefully I'll be able to tie this into a knot or a little bow. And you can pick up any ribbon you like. I wouldn't, I wouldn't use a really thick ribbon. Um, I think this is a fine ribbon here, you know, this size. I'd right, hold that down, bring this guy over and through. All right, now I don't want the bow to be that long. I'm going to make it a little bit shorter, my loop. All right, I'm going to cut this piece off over there. All right, so just go ahead and tighten that up. And then you're going to put it back. I'm, I'm going to need to stand this up for one second just so I can see how high I want my blocks to go or my ribbon. Okay, so it's going to kind of look like this. I know you can't see the ribbon on there, but it is really cute. Um, I will put I will, I will a picture of this, the finished project, on designspace44.blogspot.com so you can see it. And I think it is a really cute little project. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the process of me making it. Any questions at all, please let me know. If you like the video, please thumbs it up. It does help me out. But there you have it, today's project. As always, thanks so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.